what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Farzad Rashidi of Raspana, and I'm going to formally introduce you, Farzad, in a second. But before I do, I like to point out other interviews people should check out. And since this is a uh, amazing SaaS company, we'll talk about some of the past SaaS co-founders, that software as a service co-founders we've had on the show. Uh, we've had the co-founder of Wistia, Chris Savage, talked about being honest to customers when they were still small. He had the co-founder of Pipedrive, um, Ormas. He talked about actually having brain surgery, getting married, and moving to Estonia uh, to the U.S., from Estonia to the U.S., all in the same year. And at the time, I think, Barzad, they had 10,000 paying customers. Now, if you look at Pipedrive's website, I think they over, have over 100,000 customers. So they've grown pretty pretty big. We're one of them. Um, yeah, you are. Oh, cool. Um, co-founder of Zapier, Wade Foster, and contactually co-founder Zvi Band. So check those episodes out. And uh, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships. And how do we do that? We help you run your podcast. And for me, I've been podcasting for over a decade, and the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships and profile the companies and people I most admire on this planet. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. Uh, if you have questions, go to rise25.com. Email us, support at rise25.com. If you have any questions, myself and John, my co-founder, we've been doing it for over 10 years, so we're happy to answer. Um, I'm excited to introduce today's guest. Farzad Rashidi is a co-founder of Respana, and Respana is a link building outreach platform that helps businesses increase their organic traffic from Google. And it's interesting. We're going to poke around his website. They do some amazing and really cool things as a company, as a platform, and just they're smart business people in general. So he previously ran the marketing efforts at uh, Visme, which uh, they help. He helped the company actually gain over sixteen million active users and past 3 million monthly organic uh, traffic. And Farzad, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. It's a pleasure. So in your words um, with Respana, you know, I mentioned it's a link, link building outreach platform. And I know there's a lot of misconception, you know, misconceptions around SEO and link building. So what do you see out there is, uh, is the mis some of the misconceptions? Sure. So, uh, you know, Jeremy, when we think of SEO as a customer acquisition strategy, a lot of people think of writing blog posts, right? So you do some keyword research, you build some pillar pages or landing pages and some supporting content. You stop playing on your website, put it out there, wait a few months, you're like, okay, it's crickets. <laughs> and so you move on to other things like paid ads or cool outreach for sales, right? Uh, which each have obviously their own pros and cons. Uh, what, what's really been kind of the driving factor, I would say, for a lot of SEO campaigns, especially now that it's become very competitive to uh, get rankings for some of the more common keywords, and, and especially in, more in, in some inter industries more than others, is, uh, is a matter of backlinks. And it's basically um, the way Google works is kind of a mean girls popularity contest. Uh, the more other relevant authority sources are talking about you, and uh, and linking back to your website, uh, Google and other search engines are like, oh, these guys must be credible because other people are talking about them. So if Jeremy is talking about Respana, then other people should too. <laughs> so they basically start pri prioritizing you in the queue. And that's what's been really uh, the driving factor behind a lot of um, successes we've seen in other SEO campuses. It's been one of the most important ranking factors for over uh, 20 years. Uh, so... The, uh, unfortunately, though, since it's somewhat new, uh, especially in the, in the SEO world, um, um, there's been a lot of spam going on where basically people just think of link building. I'm sure you get these emails every day. I was like, hi, I'd like to publish a guest post on your website. <laughs> and uh, I get three of those uh, a day, probably. That's Ish. right. Or I have yeah. high quality links if you want to buy them, right? And so um, that's unfortunately been the, the image that's been portrayed, uh, kind of like I would think of 
think of it as like early 2000s cold emails for sales, right? So it's like basically, hey, if you sign up today, we'll give you a $50 gift card or discount. Uh, and so it's a similar concept. I think it's, it's an industry that's still evolving. And people and marketers are still trying to figure it out and understand how to make it work. And uh, yeah, and Responders is a platform that kind of helps us facilitate and uh, building those relationships, kind of staying away from having to spam, um, um, <laughs> make sure to get a bunch of websites um, in order to build high authority backlinks. What is, Marza, what is a good outreach message, right? So we get these outreach messages from people that, are saying, hey, I see you have this article. I'd love to place a link. What would be a good outreach message that you recommend? Because also we'll get into the software a bit, but you can actually mm-hmm. send outreach messages through your your software. Or you could do it manually, right? So what Responder does is no magic. We basically just make it 10 times faster, right? So you can still do whatever Responder does yourself. So if you're very new to this, don't spend your money on all these fancy tools, right? Maybe try to work it yourself doing some manual outreach and kind of see what works best for you and your niche and and kind of um, help respond to be the gasoline you pour on that little fire, right? Uh, as far as outreach tactics go, there is no silver bullet. There's no one single strategy that works for everyone. Um, it's entirely reliant on the type of um, industry you're in and the type of company you are in. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it's not the right fit for every type of company. So we can dig a little deeper and um, understanding what type of companies could benefit from this type of um, strategies. But I can give you some examples. So we're not just talking hypotheticals, right? Uh, for example, uh, one of the simplest strategies I always recommend, especially founders to go on at, to to do is, is uh, what I'm doing right now. Uh, so right now we're going to get a backlink from Rice25, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> so no, that's, by the way, let me pause here really quick. That is not to say I'm only here to get a backlink from your website, right? Obviously, there's myriad of benefits to me spending an hour of my time to do this. Number one goal is for me to make connections with smart people like yourself in the industry. Uh, two is basically uh, so building that relationship is number one. Two is obviously you're getting free advertising to a niche audience by educating uh, the audience on a topic uh, that, you, that you feel comfortable talking about. And, um, and also... And the side effect of that is also you, you're getting these mentions from high authority websites that wouldn't otherwise work with you. Uh, so that, that's a very simple strategy where you're providing value to the podcast host by coming onto the show, helping them create an episode, right? Helping them create content. And in return, you're also sending a signal to the search engines that, hey, uh, Farza of Responda must be an interesting guy because Jeremy's taking time out of his day to talk talk to him and and link to his website. Uh, so that that's one of the simplest strategies everybody can implement. Um, um, obviously, given that uh, <laughs> you are already decided, you've already decided that ICO is the right acquisition strategy for you. Yeah, I mean, I've had people flat out tell me that. I was like, I'm... When I first came on, I came on just to get a backlink for SEL and <laughs> because they know I'm going to publish it on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, YouTube. It's going to be a separate blog post. So they're going to right. get across over 15 different channels and get their links on over 15 different channels as well. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, the process of doing that is also very simple. Like you don't need a whole lot of tools to be able to make it work. Uh, so the way our team did it basically was, um, first of all, I, I, my, one of my marketing team members, Vlad, is actually a listener to your show. So this one was uh, was special. But basically what he does is he finds people in our space that we respect, people that are other founders of other software companies, people that uh, are in, in, in our space in the SEO game. And he uh, pops their name through Respond and, and or if you don't have access to our tools, you can just look at them on iTunes basically and see... What are some of the episodes of podcasts that have interviewed that person whom you respect, right? And uh, go ahead and do some digging. Again, Respond automates a lot of that. But you can go in and manually find the person, the the host. They're very easy to spot right on LinkedIn. Get their contact information. Reach out to them and say, hey, Jeremy, came across your interview with Farza. And I love the fact how you guys talked about SEO and 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 Respana. And, uh, you know, I'm a founder of this and that company. We'd love to hop on our show and talk about X, Y, and Z if you're still accepting guests, right? So you're not spamming anybody. You're implying to the host that, hey, I've actually done my research and and I believe I can add value to your audience. Hence why I'm here. It's not, a, 
you know, uh, <laughs> spammy email I'm, I'm, I'm sending out to everyone. And at the, at the same time, it doesn't require a whole lot of resources or time to be able to make it work. Yeah. No, I, I wanted you to comment on the outreach too, because I mean, you know, I get over, who knows, like 600 emails a day. And I got a message from your team member and obviously I responded to it. It was very specific. It was very personal. And I responded to it, right? And so it w- it was effective on me. Um, and I'm sure it's effective uh, with other people. I love to hear with VizMe, right? So this the idea and concept, everything kind of was from came from that. Mm-hmm. What were you doing with VizMe? I'm sure everyone wants to know that was working so well that you're going to do with uh, Respond as well. That was helping <laughs> get three million over three million. Um, monthly organic traffic visitors to the site. Right. I'm happy to dive a little deep in that. So it, it's easy now looking back uh, to say, oh, you know, it all made sense what we did. At the time, we had no idea what we were doing. Uh, and it, as a matter of fact, uh, whatever we were doing at the time didn't work. So I'm happy to kind of dig a little deeper on that. But I think one one key thing I want people who are listening to the show to take away is that if SEO is working for a company, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So the first question you need to ask yourselves is if it's the right strategy to begin with, right? So for example, if you run a uh, enterprise-grade software company or a um, medical device company that sells like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of like medical equipment to hospitals, put yourself in shoes of your customers. How are they finding you? Is this a type is is this a type of product or service you sell that people are actively searching for? Are they even aware of the problem they're solving, right? And if so, where are they looking for it? Are they googling it? Yes. Okay. Then it's almost idiotic for you not to invest resources in SEO. So, but understanding those two key questions: one, are your customers aware of the problems that are solving, and two, whether they're googling about it is two objective questions you can ask yourself. And that that's going to kind of weed out the majority of businesses. Uh, so a lot of people come to me, especially friends of mine who are working at our com- uh, companies. They're like, hey, Farzad, you know, I know you're an SEO guy. And, I, and our company, my boss is trying to uh, hire an SEO agency. And, and uh, what do, who do you recommend we hire? And, uh, and I'm like, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys sell a product that's a hundred thousand dollars. This is a s- entirely different sales cycle and different market, uh, and it's not the type of customer that would come and Google and find you and, and, and in order to find your product. Now, this is also not to say uh, to discourage people from from taking that initiative. You just need to be mindful that whatever customer acquisition strategy you pick, it's going to be resource intensive. There's no, uh, you know, get rich fast type no uh, customer. Exactly. So. Understanding what's your main customer acquisition strategy is very important from the get-go. Now, when you decide to, for example, VizMe, uh, for folks who don't know what it is, it's an it's a platform you can, as a business, you can create any sort of visual content like presentations, infographics, etc., uh, in a matter of a few minutes. Uh, and and this is something that's on brand and basically matches your uh, brand. And now, let's say, Jeremy. Uh, you want to create an infographic about this episode that we are doing today, all right? And you don't already have a solution to make it work. What's the first thing you do when it comes to finding a solution to make an infographic? Look, yeah. tell me, what, what's the first thing you do? First action. I mean, I for an infographic, I would either ask a friend or Google it. Yeah, exactly. You just go and Google, right? And as a, as a matter of fact, we knew that from day one because a lot of our, when you go take a look at the, um, I would say uh, uh, Google search results. Um, it, it's quite clear when when you type look at the volume of keywords that are being searched. It, it's a significant volume in our target country. So we already knew that these are the type of um, customers we want to get in front of. It gets very expensive to be trying to be a household name, but if you present your solution in places where they're looking for a solution to a problem then it becomes, um, <laughs> you know, uh, an easy sale. So problem was, so we were like, that's great. Let's go and put out a bunch of landing pages, write a bunch of blog posts, invest like two months in it. <laughs> and we put it all on our website. And guess what happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it was completely crickets. 
And I was like, well, that was kind of a slap in the face, right? <laughs> we as a small company, we mess all these resources and nothing. So uh, here's what I did. Actually, can you do me a favor, Jeremy? While you're here, can you open up a new tab and yeah. just look up one of our um, keywords, like presentation software, for example? Just Google presentation software? Just Google presentation sure. software. So that's one of the key terms we're going after. All right. So you see, tell me how many search results you see uh, pop up at the very top, right below the search bar? It says about They're all ads, yeah. Yeah, no, but how many oh, search results? Oh, 881 million? 881 million. I was like, okay. This is interesting. This me so, is right here, though. Oh, that's good. Well, that's those are paid ad spots. That's yeah, cheap. Well, this is number yes. one. Yeah, yeah. Organic search results, baby. That's right. <laughs> so let me tell you, uh, the problem was when we had put together these pages and put them up there, we thought that we were in the top one percent when it came to quality of content, however way you want to define it. Right? We had hired an. Uh, expensive writer, we had put together all of our resources in keyword research, on-page optimizations, you name it, yada, 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 all the nerdy things. So our site was mobile-friendly, loaded fast. Problem is, if there are 881 million search results for your keywords, doesn't matter you're in the top 1%. You're still in the millions, right? Yeah. Now, how do you go from the million search results There's some to joke about, I forgot, you probably know it. What do you call a company that's obsolete on page two of Google or something? You know, right? Yeah. So that's that's a great place to to <laughs> hide a dead body. That's right. <laughs> exactly. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. So the the matter of fact is, it, it becomes a matter of popularity at that point because we can all agree that the top one percent of anything is pretty good out of eight hundred million. So out of these eight hundred million, we we don't claim we don't have we have the best content or we have the best page, right? Most of these guys are pretty pretty damn good. Now, we need to understand how Google works as a, as a search engine. And that's something that uh, you need to go back to the late 90s uh, <laughs> when Google wasn't really a big player in the search, uh, search engine game. Uh, back in the day when there was AOL and Yahoo and Bing were still, uh, you know, one of the main players. The problem with them was that the way they were prioritizing search results was entirely based on the content that was on the page. And marketers tend to ruin everything. So what happened was a lot of people were just stuffing keywords on their pages. And guess what? It was working. <laughs> it was like Bing was showing it at the top of the search results. So what happened was that quite very quickly, internet became a junkyard, right? As when it, whenever keyword you, you would search for, it just brings up relevant content. What Google guys did uh, that made them billion, multi-billionaires, was basically developed this algorithm called PageRank. So that was developed by, um, it's actually, it's funny because it, it, I, I always thought it was because it was ranking pages, but it's actually because of Larry Page, their founder, who, they, who developed it, could call it PageRank. But anyway, so what they did, developed was that Mean Girls popularity contest that I described earlier, right? Where now not only we rely on the content on the page, we want to make sure that you have all the basics done, right? And the content is good. And uh, you know, people who come on here spend enough time on it, right? They don't just immediately jump back and all the other stuff. But the main thing that really put them over the top was this concept of links and understanding that similar to how academic articles are judged by the number of citations they get, similar way where they're like, why don't we put that into practice for web pages. So if other people are constantly talking about this brand, this domain, and this web page, there must be a credible resource. That becomes interesting, doesn't it? Because it's not only reliant on the amount of work that you put in to build that content, it's also what other people think about it. And that's what's really making it very difficult to cheat the algorithm. And obviously there are ways to cheat it, but Google very quickly became very smart to identify some of these uh, cheaters. Now. 20 years later, if I ask forward to 2022, um, it's almost impossible for you to get rankings for competitive terms if you don't have a, um, a very solid uh, backlink profile. And that is mentions from authoritative publications that are relevant to your space. Um, and, and that's sort of the problem that Respondent solves. And, and it was something that we were struggling at VizMe at the beginning because it, it was very hard to scale. And we built it initially as an internal tool, worked ridiculously well, and we decided to release it as a standalone product. 
So how are you using it internally at that time? And I'd love to hear how you've, you know, because one thing we are talking about before we hit record is how do you keep improving the product? So I'm sure, what did it look like when you're using a Visme and it, it worked well? And then right. what did you improve on and add now? So talk about so Visme we, first. Sure. So Visme, <laughs> it's kind of funny now looking back at some of the old screenshots that I see. We were basically duct taping together a bunch of different tools that we were using, um, put it under one roof to sort of help us streamline the process and save time. And, and, and that was a process of basically identifying, okay, what are some of the pages that we need to find or some of the websites we need to work with? Who is the right person at each one of these websites? What's their contact information? What's the best way to contact them and, and reach out to them and follow up? And they were all done by using like five or six different software tools. And we basically, at some point, we were hitting up the same website twice in a day. <laughs> like it was a, it became a mess very quickly. Um, and so Respondent's goal at initially was just to help us keep our sanity with things, right? We're basically, we're like, okay, let's put it all on one roof so we can't really mess it up. And uh, and we vastly underestimated of how much work it takes because I wasn't a founding member of Visme. I, I joined as, as, as a uh, marketing, as a first marketing hire, but product was built out at the time. Of how much work it is to build commercial software that people who come onto the website and, and sign up and come into the platform would be able to just understand how to make it work. Um, and, and that's what's, what's been keeping us on our toes uh, for, the, for the past uh, number of years. So, uh, and the rest is history. I have a quick question. So with Visme, you know, you basically, you know, had to create content, but, you know, you build it and they will come is not, uh, not the case. So you had to do a lot of outreach. So you kind of built mm -hmm. this internal tool, which now is Respana to help reach out and get some of these um, links placed to this high quality content. Right. Um, let's talk, you know, this came up at one of the top search results when we looked at, you know, presentation software, and this is mm -hmm. obviously coming from your site and it's a really, um, robust platform. What is your thought on now in within this, you're mentioning, you know, quote unquote competitors, right? right. So how, what, what's your thought on that? If people are like, well, now you're on, I know it's coming from your, you're listed number one. Of Tell course. me some of your thoughts on that. <laughs> so, so let me, let me take it back a notch. So as you, we, we kind of break it down into two parts. Um, Invest me on page ad or it's just, it's just general standard practice on page SEO and off page SEO. On page SEO is all the all the nerdy things we do that basically you know, starts from keyword research and building pages and writing content. And then the off page side of things is where respondent comes into play. And that's a game of reaching out to other websites, building relationships, yada, 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 promotion tactics. Now the on-page side of things, uh, we can we can uh, get a little deeper in data, understanding how we go about it. And then again, uh, it may be difficult to follow what I'm saying because I can't share my screen. Just basically show you. Um, um, I think what would be best is uh, for me to kind of send people over to um, a guide that I actually put together. So if you Google actually Visme marketing strategy, mm. um, I wrote a 160 page book. It wasn't meant to be that long, but I tend to blabber a lot. Uh, but I <laughs> look up Visme marketing strategy, Google it. Um, and it, it's a free ebook that I put together that basically outlines step by step um, of all of our strategy from start to finish. So it should be, yep, yeah, the first one. So you're more welcome to mention also in the show notes for folks who are listening to take a look at that. And just pass it on to your writing team or your marketing team. Get them to take a look at it. Some good stuff in there. And, and we don't plug yeah, it. It's visme.co, V-I-S-M-E.co slash marketing dash strategy. If you're that's listening right. to the audio and you can't see the video piece, but that's where we are right now if you're watching the video. That's right. And and so basically what the, the process is we, we create three types of content, right? Um, First kind of content is what we call SEO focused content. So these are normally higher volume, top of the funnel content pieces, educa educational resources. Think of it as, for example, um, how do I create a presentation or how do I uh, present well in front of an audience or yada, 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 right? Second 
type of content we create is what we call the link magnet content. And these are content pieces that are, uh, it sounds kind of bad, we, we should probably rename it, but these are type of content that are original research, stuff that is interesting enough that people would actually want to reference in their articles. And it could be statistics, it could be studies, right? And, um, and these sort of type of uh, content pieces that we exclusively create, not just because of the search volume they get is probably close to zero, right? But because it's a conduit for us to drive a lot of links to because we create, you know, interesting info that people actually would like to do it. Like one example of that type of content is so that content, the first piece of content you saw was like first best presentation tools. That was the example of the SEO focused content, right? That gets a lot of search traffic. Uh, if you want to take a look at um, a um, mid funnel content, which is for link magnets, you can look up, for example, Visme Game of Thrones. Okay. I know, trust me, it would make sense. <laughs> so uh, purpose behind this, so what we did, have you watched Game of Thrones? I, I've never seen it, actually. Never watched I get, Game of I get addicted to shows, and so I, Come on, I, man. I'm scared if I start, I will. Just, <laughs> you won't see me for a couple months. No problem. Uh, but anyway, so if you take a look at the first one, right before the last season came out, sorry, spoiler alert, um, we went to a betting site and we were like, okay, here's how much people are betting on these characters who's going to win the Game of Thrones, right? And we put together like this infographic data, this thing that uh, would basically visualize who's going to win it, right? And surprise, we we, all right, we actually thought that Jon Snow was going to win and we, we were wrong. Um, I'm not going to say who, just because you haven't watched it yet, but that didn't matter. So what we did basically was just to put together this um, this blog post and uh, we were like, okay, let's go and pitch all the journalists, all the people that are writing on Game of Thrones, because Visme is a more database, like more on the, um, um, I would say, so it's a broader market compared to Respond. Uh, so again, it's not to say you should do the same thing. It, it's something that makes sense for us. Uh, and basically, this brought in, I think, around 60 or 90, uh, some, some, I, I don't quite recall the number. Um, like top tier publication mentions that with links to Visme, um, just that one article. Mm -hmm. And and so these are a type of articles we use to actually drive these links and, and mentions back links to our website. And then at, at the third piece, the third leg of that type of content is what we call our conversion content or uh, money pages, where basically if you look up presentation software, that landing page, that's our money page, right? Mm -hmm. Those are pages that we don't ever uh, build links to uh, because nobody wants to link to a sales page, right? Uh, but we include internal links from our educational resources to them so that when we go build links to these educational pieces or these link magnet content, they will indirectly uh, basically uh, pass on this link uh, equity over to these landing pages. Now it helps them get up in the search fields. So I know it sounds very complicated and very tedious, but here's the thing. I know it's tedious. It's supposed to be because it's a competitive advantage, right? Anybody in their grandmother's basement can go build a software, right? Now there's the barrier to entry has become so low. But now guess guess what? It's going to take years, decades to get to the same level of traffic uh, that the Visme is getting. So um, right now, if we were to pay Google for the same level of traffic that Visme is getting, guess how much we would have to pay in AdWords? Get the same keywords, same level Millions? $1.4 million a month. Every month. Got to write a check to Sergey <laughs> or to Larry Page. And so it's worth it if done right over time. It's not an easy time. It's, it's not an easy initiative. And, and it's not supposed to be because it's, it's a competitive advantage. That's why I mentioned at the very beginning, you need to first understand if it's the right fit for your business. If this is, your, if this is the way you would acquire customers in the first place. And if it is, it's a step-by-step instructions you can follow. Yeah, I just want to say too, Raza, thanks for walking walking us through that. If people are listening to the audio version and you do want to see the video version, if you're on iTunes or wherever or Spotify, you can go to inspiredinsider.com and, and we are walking through this on from a video component as well. But I love the thought process of, you know, from SEO, link building, um, which is really what that means is traffic, which what that means is more clients or customers. I mean, in the end. Um, yes or no, is it a good fit? If it is, there's the on-page, off-page, and you kind of walk through you know, the off-page components and how that feeds the on-page and the educational content, the link magnets, and how those, those, those educational and those, those content pieces feed top of funnel, mid funnel, and bottom of 
of funnel. So I appreciate you kind of breaking that down because it is a really complex topic in at least a framework so people can think about those pieces and and what they could start with, right? Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. And and understanding these basics is, is I think is essential for any type of business owner, even if this is not something you have capacity for doing in, in-house and you are looking to get some outside help. These are things that people would charge you to do, right? We don't offer services per se, but um, you you can hire someone to do this for you. Don't don't get discouraged. You're like, okay, man, that sounds like a lot of work. Uh, but it's important to understand these so you can hire the right person. Because anybody, again, in their grandmother's basement can sell SEO services. Most of them don't know what they're doing. So you at least having a basic understanding of, of what needs to be done gives you a better perspective uh, when it comes to hiring the right person to do it. So talk about um, cloud beds and how they use Respond. Oh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. If you want to pull up their case study, actually, it should be somewhere at the top. Um but so CloudBet guys, uh, they're actually, it's interesting. One of their marketing team members actually just uh, uh, left a company and went to another company and they're actually signing their new company to respond as well. Uh, and their existing team on CloudBet still using it. Uh, they also started out, um, they didn't have a, as a good of a content strategy at the beginning. So they basically were still experimenting with the whole content game. Uh, I think you just passed right here. Um so when, at the beginning, where basically they didn't have all these fancy keywords and content pieces put together yet. And what they were doing was So what is cloud beds, just so people get a reference of what type of sure. company is? Yeah, so this is one of the leading hotel management software. Uh, so if you own a hotel or some sort of rental property, you can use their platform to manage it, basically. Um, and so at the time, what they were doing basically was cold hours. So going after hotels one by one, et cetera. Now they wanted to build a, a search present so that people would come and um, encourage inbound leads to basically start coming contacting them directly. And so what they did at the beginning, which, which I very much recommend to everyone is starting from some of the low hanging fruit, like don't get so tied up into, okay, I need to go have like a hundred pages on my website and uh, everything needs to be perfect before I start doing some outreach. They actually started pitching themselves on podcasts. They started uh, going and reaching out to some listicles, right? Hey, what are some of the best hotel management tools? You don't need fancy content or anything on your website that uh, that would require doing these type of outreach. Um, and, and and collaborating with other web publications, kind of getting the foot in the door. Stuff that is common sense, but most companies don't do. <laughs> and so um, they started with that while they were building that content strategy and, and basically doing the keyword research, all that good stuff. And then once that content pieces, those content pieces were ready, now they started shifting their focus now towards some of the more advanced techniques, which is now, okay, how do we actually acquire links to specific pages, right? And, and, and educational resources, which is a little more complicated. Uh, so they kind of warmed their way up into the game, even though they hadn't done any sort of average before. And they just uh, accomplished uh, great things. Now they're getting over 100K, 120K, something um, in um, the organic traffic. And uh, they've been with us for about a year and a half and, and, and going strong. Talk about the tool itself for a second. And how they're, you know, maybe get into the weeds a little bit on, you know, I know one thing that uh, if you, someone goes to respond.com, you can actually go to, uh, the demo page, which um, one thing that I love about this is, you know, you can book a call and get a demo, but you can also go on there and get an instant demo and watch a video on it. So talk about for their use case, how, what are some of the the things they're doing um, with the software itself? Right. So I'm not sure how comfortable they may, uh, they, they are with me sharing specific use yeah, cases. I mean, you, can, specific you can give a general, but, you know, general, right. if it's a B2B, what would you recommend? Someone's a B2B company, like they go into Respana. Mm-hmm. What are, you know, some things that best practices, I guess you could say? Absolutely. So let me first start with the resource and then we can g- give give some specific examples. So if you scroll down on respondent.com space, so if you scroll down in the footer, anywhere in the footer, we have under resources an average strategy hub. So if you actually under resources tab, there we go. Perfect. So if you click that, we give you ready to use recipes and templates of basically all popular average strategies. Uh, so this is step by step instructions you can follow 
with relevant templates so that you can actually have a blueprint of what to do. And these are the type of tactics that are separated based on their objective. So and you don't need Respondo to implement them, right? You can still do it yourself manually. Uh, it's just, as I said, Respondo kind of helps you do yeah. it faster. But as far as the the specific strategies go, as I said, normally I recommend folks to start from some of the basics, like for example, listicle strategies, right? Any list posts that are listing, hey, what are some of the best marketing agencies in Texas, right? What are some of the best restaurants uh, in, in Nashville? Uh, what are some of the best link building tools, right? I haven't already mentioned you. Go and reach out and, and pitch them. It's like, hey, man, we'd love to have you on in our restaurant uh, or on our chain or for our factory or for Respondent. We'll give them a free product to come and check it out. And and if you liked it, give us a mention here. Um, so that's, that's one simple strategy I'd recommend. Podcast is another. Another one that, that's interesting is, is uh, press inquiries. So there's a lot of journalists writing content already. And they're looking for experts, subject matter, matter experts that are wanting to comment and gather comments. Uh, and so respond to collect some of these. And you can also sign up for a free service called Hero or Help a Reporter Out, the free service uh, by Cision. And you can kind of see every day they send you three emails of the field with like journalist queries and uh, from all over the place. Uh, so respond kind of has a dashboard that helps you kind of keep your sanity, but you can, you can do it still. Uh, manually and and go and find specific journalist queries that come out that are relevant to you. For example, if somebody's asking, "Hey, what are some of the best ways uh, for web, uh, for businesses to increase organic traffic?" Okay, guess what? I, I have a few things to say, so I could go ahead and write a few write a few sentences. Now, journalist is going to read it, and if they like it, they put it on the article, and they're going to have to cite me. So they're going to guess what? Mention Respondent, <laughs> right? So it's another simple strategy. So again, simple stuff doesn't have to be nerdy or or super complicated and over time as you start kind of putting together some of these more strategic pages then you kind of get your strategies a little bit more uh, targeted uh so that that's sort of uh, where i would recommend folks yeah. to get started yeah i see vlad shout out to vlad he's the one who i believe who reached out to me so thanks vlad for reaching out and making <laughs> this happen um vlad is a but, rock star yeah so just if you're watching the video part, you can scroll down on Respondent's page and in the uh, the footer, there is a link, Outreach Strategy Hub. And just so people can understand what's on here, here are some uh, kind of categories. You can go deeper and go to that page um, and check it out. But there's a reverse image search link building. Um, there's an article for that. Infographic outreach, uh, unlinked mentions, um, guest posting. Um, there's also a content promotion category, which has resource page links, blog post mentions, broken link building, um, SERP competitor backlinks, anchor text strategy, and there's a blogger outreach. So there's a you have a treasure trove of of methods here that people should check out. Affiliate recruitment, um, listicle strategy, which you talked about, and then there's digital PR, which is how to use press inquiries, journalist outreach, and podcast outreach. So check that page out. There's a lot here and in, in one thing, you know, just start with one of them. Right. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Not rocket science. You, um, need, you need one or two of these strategies to work for you. Yeah. So, you know, probably take you a couple weeks or months to work through those, but I'm sure it's well worth it. So check it out. <laughs> Outreach strategy hub uh, on the respondent page. One thing I wanted to do is just talk about, um, you know, you have, you can tell you spent a lot of time and energy on the messaging, on the UI, and what's on this each of the pages. So I'd love to talk about pricing um, and how you came up with the pricing piece, because you have a very simple um, pricing um, plans. And mm -hmm. again, people can, can check it out. Um, obviously, at the top, um, there's a seven-day free trial, so people can just come and and test it out for themselves um and then when you again when you're listening to this this may change in the future who knows but now at this point in time this is what it looks like so don't yell at me if like a couple of years from now they've increased the pricing um <laughs> but there is a starter plan and there on there's an unlimited plan so tell me about how you came up with these you know, Jeremy, I'm going to have to make a confession. Uh, a lot of people in the SaaS world, uh, when you ask about their pricing, they're like, yes, we did some market analysis and we spent, uh, you know, five experts uh, to get their opinions and, and ran a market survey. And, and at the end of the day, 
anything you price, including your house, it's a number you catch off the air. It's just the reality of things. Anything you price, you, you have a service you offer, right? At Rise 25, you cut that price off air, off thin air, right? Obviously, you have some sense. It's an educated guest. It's not something that it's completely arbitrary. Obviously, you have some uh, team members. So their salaries are taken into account, average number of hours it may take, right? So any type of company. But at the end of the, the, at the, end of the day, you're still picking a number that you think may be reasonable. So we experimented a lot with our pricing. And what we found, we're like, okay, who is our ideal target customer? People that are actually coming in using our platform. We noticed that a lot of people who are very successful on their own that are implementing a lot of these link building tactics in-house are a lot of other B2B SaaS companies, some com companies that, like Visme, et cetera, companies that are tech savvy in general. It doesn't have to be a software company. Companies that are tech savvy, they don't want to go pay an agency to do all this work for them. They want to have that level of visibility in-house and level that level of control to be able to kind of um, make it work by themselves and scale things while keeping, obviously, the cost reasonable. So we, we knew that was one of the target markets. So we started our pricing at 145 a month back in the day when we started. And, and it was a little rich for a lot of smaller company startups that were just getting started. So we landed on 99 a month just simply because a lot of other mar marketing tools in this space were, were around that range. And it felt comfortable for a lot of people to start with that. And so we're like, okay, what's the minimum things that people need to be successful, right? So not to scale things or not too little that they are going to have to make him upgrade after like two months, right? So we're like, what's the minimal set of tools you need that would make you successful? And what we found is that you need one sending email account, you can have unlimited team members who help you, right? We, that's arbitrary metric because otherwise we would just share your login. So we didn't want to charge for a seat. Like that's stupid because we always share our logins internally. So we're like, let's just make people unlimited, make it unlimited, let them invite their team members so they can have their own login that don't have to share for security reasons. Let's, let's give them one email that they can actually use for sending pitches. It's more than enough for any small company that starts. And 5,000 email credits, which is the sweet spot we found uh, that you can run meaningful or large enough campaigns that, that would yield meaningful results. And that's 99 a month. Build month to month. There's no fees, taxes, nothing like that. That would got you fees, right? <laughs> so it's $99 on the, on the dot that you pay. And then now over time, if you'd like to now okay, this is working great. Let's add another team member or let's add another email account. Now let's increase our credit. So we added upsell ways that you can upsell, but only they become relevant when you're already getting results and you want to now scale things part, right? But what happened was that since we were paying or since we were charging per email account, extra added email accounts or credits, a lot of marketing agencies that were working with clients, uh, but they had 85 of them, right? So that 85 clients and they were like, hey, this is going to become absolutely ridiculously expensive if I need to have 85 email accounts and, you know, 100,000 credits a month based on your pricing that you have. Um, and I'm like, yes, you're right. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so what we did, we were like, okay, agencies, people, uh, they, they hate limits and, and credits. And, and we're like, okay, let's, let's do it this way. Let's pick a number that's comfortable enough for an agency to, to begin with, that's not going to cut too much into their margin and just give it to them unlimitedly. But put together some safeguards uh, because we're spending dealing with data and it's a very uh, resource intensive operation that is running because there's scraping things, it's contacting multiple data providers. Um, let's put some- Yeah, there's real costs involved. There's exactly the real costs involved that we wanted to put some safeguards so in form of a fair use policy that uh, would prevent abuse, right? So that nobody could come in to like share their account with like their entire country, right? So, <laughs> um, that's why we, we put together some safeguards, released on them to planet. That's actually been very, very popular. And, and uh, to my surprise, actually quite a lot of companies that are in-house teams also signed with on them to plan, uh, but it's actually half and half. Um, and just simply because they're like, listen, man, we're, like $10 million a year company, like this is 500 bucks a month is nothing to us, like four ninety nine a month bill monthly. Um, they're like, I don't want to worry about limits of credits or something like that. So just sign us up with that limit plan. We're like, all right, that's fine. We'll take it. <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah, most agencies normally um, uh, start with the unlimited plan, but we've seen that a lot of companies 
I start on the startup plan and they over the course of the one or two years, they hit a point where you're like, hey, this is awesome. When it hire a bunch of team members, actually invest, like for example, Vizme is on our unlimited plan. They have 10 full-time average team members. Uh, so they kind of graduate into that level after a year or two. So first of all, because I have one last question. And before I ask it, um, I just want to point people to Respana.com to learn more. Um, check out more episodes on InspiredInsider.com. I mean, um, I think, you know, going through Respana's site is um, almost like a master class of conversion rate optimization, all the the things that someone looks at, including in a page and in content. So going through the pages, I encourage anyone to check out the pricing page, the demo page, the case studies page, the careers page. You guys have done an amazing job and it just looks nice, right? So well, thank you. Thanks um, for what you do. Uh, my last question is, who are some other people in the, in the SaaS industry that you look at as either you know, specific mentors to you or distant mentors that you just look at what they're doing in the industry? That That is a great question. There's quite a lot of companies in our space that are doing wonderfully well. And um, the two companies that I have, have huge respect for is uh, our SEMrush and, uh, or SEMrush, whatever way they pronounce it nowadays, and Ahrefs, uh, that we actually have direct integrations with both. And these companies have done phenomenally well, and especially Ahrefs as a bootstrap company and never raised any outside funding. They're doing $100 million a year plus in revenue and with a team of 50 people. So it's, it's phenomenal how they've grown so fast quickly. Um, but what has been working very well for them has been a content first approach where they're getting all, almost all uh, of their uh, clients through inbound channels, through their traffic. And um, very, there's very little reliance on on cold outreach and um, and also paid ads. And it's not to say that those approaches don't work. They actually work very well for for the industries that they're built for, like cold outreach for enterprise sales. Obviously, can't get around it. Or paid ads for lifestyle businesses, right? If you sell T-shirts and like uh, sunglasses, yes, obviously Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok, right? Uh, so for our sort of space in the place that we're in, and we've seen that no channel really works come near SEO as, as a main customer strategy, uh, customer acquisition strategy. And we've learned quite a lot of them just by watching them and seeing what they're doing and kind of uh, getting a lot of inspiration from them. So obviously a lot of the things that we're doing is not something that we came up with. These are uh, stuff that um, um, people have been doing experimentations with for for a couple of decades. So. Oh, I see you've you got the you got a SEMrush guy on your on your podcast. Eugene was also. on, yeah, SEMrush. It was Eugene. a great episode. So they, yeah, I, I love it. Beautiful. I love that shout out. That's that's a good one. Yes, absolutely. And SEMrush is, is a great complement to our product, actually. So that they, they're extremely good at uh, on page stuff, right? So doing an optimization, keyword research, all that good stuff, and and Respond sort of takes an outreach part part of it. So a lot of people like export a lot of data from SEMrush or pull it directly through an integration and put it into Respond. Farzad, first of all, thank you. Everyone check out Respana and more. And I want to be the first one to thank you. Thanks, Farzad. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. This was fun. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, looks like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.